today we will learn another new topic that is called ampere's circuital law so now first of all we will understand what is there the main concept behind this law so first of all ampere's circuital law so first of all we will see what is this rule to understand it we can say that we have to assume one imaginary plane or a loop through which some current is passing say this is one imaginary loop through this plane or the region some current passing say here current i1 is passing through this some current i2 is passing in this downward direction some current passing i3 in this direction now some current again passing that is i4 in upward direction like this now we want to find out the resultant of this current and what is the effective magnetic field due to it so the resultant magnetic field intensity that we want to find we can use ampere's circuital law now what is that in circuital law that for that what we do we imagine one closed loop around this current and we consider that it is divided in a so many small tiny line segment say very small line segments are there in which it is divided 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 in this manner and we consider that each segment is of length dl now this dl segment which is enclosing the current it will give us or it provide us the resultant direction of magnetic field now how to find out the direction of magnetic field to find out this direction of magnetic field we are applying ampere circuital law and what is the statement of the law to understand it what we will do we will apply that the line integral of magnetic induction so we can say that the line integral integral of magnetic induction that is b our magnetic field b so magnetic induction over a closed loop over a closed loop that is given over here that is closed loop that we have considered in a red color in a magnetic field in a magnetic field so this closed loop is kept in a magnetic field is equals to is equals to what so it equals to the product of product of algebraic sum sum of what so we can say that it is the pro product of algebraic sum of of the current enclosed by the loop so current uh, sum of current say i current i enclosed by the loop and that magnetic permeability that is mu 0 
so ultimately it can be written as that integration that is close integration of a magnetic field over a closed loop is equals to mu zero times the algebraic sum of the current passing through it this statement is called as ampere circuital law so this is one of the very most important theory here again what i had considered that i would like to explain i have considered some current lines passing through one region now i want to find out the magnetic field due to all these current lines so what i do i considered a closed loop around it and in that closed loop whatever current is enclosed i have to calculate the magnetic field regarding it and it is given that the line integral of a magnetic induction over a closed loop in a magnetic field is equals to the product of the algebraic sum of the current i enclosed that that means here i belongs to what here i is the sum of i1 i2 i3 and i4 and the product of the algebraic sum of the current and the mu zero that is the permittivity of the medium or here it is the vacuum so this is called the amperian circuital law the ampere circuital law now we see that how it is applicable to any conductor and the current passing through it for that what we will do we will consider one current carrying conductor say i have one wire of cross section area a and it has current i passing through it i will consider electric current in the manner as current i passing through it like this as i am showing with the red color i show over here that current i is passing through this as shown in this figure in this manner now now what we will consider over here as per as our question we say that we will consider one imaginary surface so say this dotted line indicate one surface i again cover this portion with blue line so i would like to show that this is one imaginary surface and these black line this border is the closed loop that we are considering about the current now we will try to see this picture in a zoom effect so suppose this portion that is visible in the picture above right now is just like the portion as i have shown over here see try to understand what i explain here again i consider current passing through it in this manner current passing through it exactly it is the same as it is explained in above figure small figure we say that current is i but actually this whole current whole of this is i in our case that i would like to explain nay now in this small segment that is we consider this is as a closed loop and we consider that it is divided in 
very small division of small length we can show as yes, it is divided in a very tiny segments of very small length dl we can explain over here it is as a dl now now what is the part that is interesting here we consider three possibilities for the magnetic field in first of all we consider that magnetic field b is also in the direction of the tangent drawn at any point so at any point if magnetic field is also tangential then all these green lines belongs to the direction of magnetic field over here like this see this is like this like this all this so all these points are in a same manner now what here due to the explanation and the acceptance of the ampere circuit law we have equation that is close integral of b dot dl but where this integration comes from our question is that where this integral term comes from so for that what we will do we will explain that how this integral term comes and for that what we will do we will say that here again see these small segments with respect to the magnetic field and the electrical field here i have magnetic field here i have magnetic field i say that magnetic field is uniform but in a tangential direction so at any point the magnetic field is in a tangential direction and also i have taken small segment of the wire dl so now if i sum up all the term say first part of the wire length here i consider this segment as suppose d l 1 now another segment i consider that the next be after it that is d l 2 the next one will be d l 3 and so on so if we sum up that is b into d l 1 here obviously the direction of d l and b both are in the same direction so it will be b d l 1 for second part it will be b d l 2 so again it will be b d l 3 and so on we can say that it is suppose nth part so it will be b d l n and it is b d l n now when we sum all these thing like b taken as a common b taken as a common and we take d l 1 plus d l 2 plus up to plus d l n for the calculation but what this shape will be or what this total sum will be so if we consider here that if if d l is a small enough if d l is a small then that d l or we say that if limit d l tends to 0 so if we consider that if 
limit delta L tends to 0 we simply consider it that if limit dl tends to 0 then all these converted into it means all these dl sigma term converted into integration dl with closed loop so here the closed loop comes from the part this is the explanation for this portion now now how it is to explain that it is equals to mu 0 into i so that is the part of the detail calculation that is not our course we have to just accept that it is mu 0 into i it can be proved by using bios hours law so it is actually one of the simplest extension of bios hours law now again as we have explained earlier in our previous case that we have derived the empyrean circuital law and we got the explanation for that now on the basis of that we can have three possibilities as i have shown you that in the equation that is integration b dot dl is equals to mu 0 into i so in this equation what i can write as a part of the equation what can be written so we can simply say there are basically three possibilities that we can explain over here first that b is in tangential we say that b is in the tangential direction so so how b is tangential we see that for that what we do we consider one single thing and that is what that we consider that loop is su suppose situated over here this is the direction of loop and we say sorry what we will do over here we consider loop like this and we consider the current is passing through it these are small dl element which are sum up into that integral term now in this case we can have two possibilities for the magnetic field uh, one that is in the direction of tangent as we have explained earlier so that is if b is there integration b dot dl will not equals to zero that we have to remember in this type of case here b and dl because dl is also in the same direction here is a b here is a dl so they are in the same direction at each and every point so actually they are having theta is equals to zero and therefore the if b is parallel to dl then this value will not be zero that is their product will not be zero but now what about the second case second case is little bit different 
that case number 2 in which we say that B is perpendicular to DL that means suppose magnetic field is acting in this direction like this in this in this in this direction and the loop that is considered is like this so here the small segment that we are taking on the loop will be like this they are having direction of the length element in this manner they will show this direction so here that they are having actually perpendicular relation in between them and we can say that it is 90 degree and therefore integration b dot dl will be 0 and the third case that is possible over is a simple thing that in a case number 3 what we can say that that b itself is 0 that means loop is lying only current is passing through it and we say that there is no magnetic field in there that means what that means actually no loop is there no current is there because we know that if there is a current it will produce the magnetic field but even though there is a case in which we can have current as well as but there is no net magnetic field for that how it is possible we say we consider a loop c if if for this loop we say that outgoing current and incoming current are equal say outgoing current and incoming current are equal then the resultant i will be zero then in this case sigma i that can be written as i1 plus minus i2 plus i3 plus minus i4 now here you will find interesting that how i have decided the direction of i2 and i4 as a negative so to decide the direction of i1 uh, sorry i2 and i4 be a negative we have to explain that the component of the dl segment suppose they are having anti clockwise direction like this that i have shown you so if we consider that if this is the direction of the empyrean loop this loop is also called empyrean loop if we consider that this is the direction of empyrean loop and if we take our right hand in the direction of the current sorry if we take the right hand fingers that is covering the current in such a way that the thumb will show the direction of net current then what will happen then we can say that if the thumb direction is upward then the upward current is generally taken as a positive and downward current taken as a negative so in the case as the line segment dl that we have considered here dl are anti clockwise so if we curl our finger in anti clockwise direction the thumb will in upward direction so the upward current are taken as a positive while downward current are considered as a negative so here in this case i2 and i4 are in downward direction they will be considered as a negative the opposite of it also true that means if 
we take the direction of the loop as a clockwise we consider the segment to be clockwise in this manner and we say that some current is passing through it suppose the current passing through it in this manner here the same current we will take as we have considered in above case and in this case the sigma i can be written as minus i1 plus i2 minus i3 that means plus here i can say that minus i3 and plus i4 because if i cover the loop in the direction of the fingers so the fingers are in the curl of the loop that is a clockwise my thumb will direct in a downward direction so in this case the current which is in a downward direction are considered as a positive and the current which are in the opposite direction are considered as a negative so i1 i2 i3 and i4 so this is true for all type of currents but it has the symmetry and it has a limit that i1 or i2 or i3 or i4 must not change throughout the experiment that means during the experiment we cannot going to change that i1's value i2's value i3's value or i4 value and therefore these type of current which are not going to change their value with time are called steady current we have also used this phenomena and this information in our chapter number 3 that in which we considered the steady current and we considered the kirchhoff's difference rules so these are from the part of that ampere circuital loop now we will see that how ampere circuital loop are, is used to find out the magnetic field due to a very long current carrying wire now we will see that what are the resemblance between gauss law and ampere's law so we can say that the comparison between gauss law and ampere's law what is that comparison let's see how we can compare these two equations so first of all we know that gauss law and here we write about ampere's law we write that we can say the ampere law is applicable to the symmetric current distribution only so here the current distribution must be symmetric i should be symmetric resultant i while here we consider that q is symmetric second thing that the gauss law is the extension of coulomb's law so it is extension of coulomb's law
so here it is extension law extension of bio sauer's law so here we can say this is the extension of bio sauer's law now the equation of gauss law is just like phi is equals to integration e dot ds for a closed surface is equals to q over epsilon in a same manner here the ampere circuit law states that integration so integration p dot dl so integration b dot dl so line integral here it is a surface integral in a gauss law while it is a line integral in ampere's law and the equation is that mu zero times the total algebraic sum of the current passing through that loop here also we have to take symmetric arrangement here also ampere circuit circuit law has some symmetric arrangement so we can say that as gauss law is some extended part of coulomb's law in a same manner ampere's law is extended part of bio sauer's law so this is the comparison part now we will learn that how amperian circuital law is used to find out magnetic field due to a very long and infinite current carrying wire let us assume that we have one current carrying wire over here the length of the wire is say infinite so we can say with the dot upward and over here that it is infinitely long wire out of this infinite length we have considered a small portion of the wire for the calculation so that this is the part for the calculation this is the wire of infinite length now we consider point p where i want to find out the magnetic field so what is the method to draw and what is the method to apply that amperian circuital law so first of all we have to enclose this current carrying wire with some closed loop so here in this case i will draw a closed loop around it so i will draw a loop that is enclosing this current this loop has very small dl segment that are enclosing it as shown in the figure we can see all these are small segment of length that is the dl dl length that is given now now in this arrangement i would like to show that in this arrangement what is the condition that here the current flowing through this wire 
is having the value of certain fixed value that is i and here this is enclosed loop that is covering this wire uh, that is infinite length wire so here covering this infinite length wire we can apply the amperian circuital law that is for lhs is equals to integration b dot dl is equals to for rhs we can say for rhs it is fixed that is mu 0 into i here i that is enclosed current by the amperian loop here we have already considered it as i only so here first we apply the lhs part and get the value b into integral of closed loop obviously we are considering enclosed loop as a circle so this enclosed part will be b into 2 pi r where we can say that r is the radius of this enclosed loop so that is given as a b into 2 pi r another way for the rhs what i can say that rhs is equals to mu 0 over i as it is because total current is also i now we have to compare this when we compare this we can simply say when we compare we can simply say that that is b into 2 pi r is equals to mu 0 into i and therefore when we make b as a subject we get mu 0 over 2 pi r into i here this is the use of amperian circuital law and here we get the result for infinite straight long wire and the magnetic field due to it here two thing comes from the result that b is directly proportional to i so if i is more the magnetic field is more but second thing that comes that is b is inversely proportional to the distance from the wire so as we move away from the wire the effect of magnetic field will decrease so how can we understand this we can understand it by this figure here in this figure if we consider that this r is increasing suppose this r is increasing so as we move away b that will decrease from the value in the same way if we increase the value of i so if i is increasing then b will also increase so b is proportional to i and b is inversely proportional to r that indicates that that magnetic field is increasing with current and it decreasing as it moves away from the current carrying conductor so this is the magnetic field due to a very long current carrying wire here few interesting part are given and that the part is that we can simply explain two or three things that first the field at every point on a circle of a radius r that is same in magnitude the magnetic field ki baat hai yahan par in other words the magnetic field possesses what is called a cylindrical symmetry humne aage bataya comparison mein 
that ampere law is applicable in the symmetry only so here this shows the symmetrical symmet uh, cylindrical symmetry now the field that normally can depend on three coordinates here in this equation number one it only depends on one coordinate that is r whenever there is a symmetry the solution is simplified in this formula second thing comes into the picture and that is the field direction at any point on this circle is tangential to it obviously from this because the direction of the current carrying segment and the magnetic field will lie in the same way so because as the current is in the direction of the right hand thumb then the finger covers the current in which manner that is the direction of the magnetic field so if we draw the curl around the current carrying wire considering that that current carrying wire is hold in a right hand the direction of current is in the direction of the thumb then we can say that where the fingers curl around the wire that will be the direction of the magnetic field here third thing that we can understand that is that even though the wire is infinite the field due to it is that is non zero distance is not infinite it tends to blow up only when we come very close to wire so as r is tending to zero then the value of b that is not realistic otherwise we can say that as r and i are there the value is non zero for that infinitely long wire that the length of the wire is not important for us then next thing that what we get that there exists a simple rule to determine the direction of the magnetic field that i have explained that consider the long wire in your right hand then the direction of the current is considered in the direction of the thumb then the fingers that will curl around the direction of the magnetic field that is that if we curl the finger that will give us the direction of the magnetic field and in our case it is the direction that is tangential to the loop its opposite is also true that means what if we consider that if we are given a wire like a loop and a current is passing through it like this say in a anti clockwise direction then what we can do we can also consider here that if the current is flowing in this manner then if we consider the right hand fingers in the direction of the current that is anti clockwise direction then the direction of the magnetic field will be in the direction of the right hand thumb so here in our case the right hand thumb will point in upper direction so this will be the direction of b so if current is in the direction of a loop or it is in a circular path or it is in the loop then the direction of the magnetic field will be in the direction of the right hand thumb so this is called right hand thumb rule